Ahoy there, my pirate nerds. I'm Mr. Cack. Welcome to Rage You Nerds, and this is Why This Will Work, the One Piece live action adaptation. Are you with me? Mutiny. Hey there, friends. So before we get into why I think this live action adaptation of Netflix will work, I first need to cover some ground rules of discussing what even is One Piece. One Piece anime in general just seems to be still a lost art when it comes to the mainstream, the mass appeal, the mass audience. So some of you may need some insight as to what it is I'm encouraging you to go watch. For those of you that are already experienced nerds and geeks, or weeboos, please jump ahead to the next chapter and I'll see you in a second. For those of you that need a little crash course into the One Piece world, allow me to fill your ears with nuggets of wisdom. One Piece was created by the masterful Ichiro Oda. It's a manga series and anime that effortlessly blends adventure, humor, and drama into an epic saga. The story follows Monkey D. Luffy, a young and spirited pirate with an audacious dream to become the king of the pirates and find the greatest treasure known as the One Piece. But Luffy can't achieve this dream alone. Along his journey, he gathers a crew of diverse, quirky, and loyal comrades, each with their own dreams and ambitions. Now, before we get to that part, let's back up a little bit. The One Piece treasure itself. I know as someone stepping into this adventure, your most immediate question will be, what is the One Piece? And the quickest, most succinct answer I can give you is, we don't know. <laughs> That's still a big piece of the mystery of the story. We know it's a treasure. We know it's something that exists. But what that existence happens to be or what it is in reality, we're not entirely sure yet. What we do know is that the story starts off, whether it's the manga, anime, or I assume this live action adaptation, with a man that declares the One Piece being real. That man is Gold Rogers. His name might be slightly different later on. Gold Rogers is on the execution platform about to be put down when he is asked from the gallery in attendance, where did you hide your treasure? He then makes his glorious infamous speech about wealth, fame, and power all being in one place where he put the one piece. Wealth, fame, power. I found everything this world has to offer. Free yourselves. Take to the seas. This then created a world where people set out to sea, becoming pirates in search of this title of Pirate King in search of this grand treasure that the Pirate King that they knew, Gold Rogers, had left for them uh, and has created just a whole mess of fun for everyone. Additionally, you might be wondering why is Gold Rogers being executed? Well, he's being put down for being a pirate, which is essentially a criminal, by the Marines, which is the policing force of an entity known as the World Government. In this world, we don't have kind of the continent shaping that we do here. We have a couple of continents, but mostly we have islands, and the world is mostly water. North blue, south blue, west blue, and east blue. And then in the center, we have a dividing path called the Grand Line, which is a treacherous stretch of water that circles around the, the planet itself, and within it are some of the fiercest islands with some of the strongest pirates in existence. Let's backtrack a little bit. So as I said earlier, One Piece is about Monkey D. Luffy, and chasing his dream while also gathering up friends and comrades, Nekama, that become his pirate crew, the Straw Hat Pirates. Reason it's called the Straw Hat Pirates is because Monkey D. Luffy starts off with an iconic straw hat. The straw hat is given to him by his mentor, Red Hair Shanks, an illustrious pirate that we start to piece together just how big of a deal he truly is. But in Luffy's eye, he's the biggest deal. He's not only someone that saved him at a young age, but he's someone who metaphorically saved him, that allowed him to see a path forward to a future that he wanted, to becoming a pirate and searching for the freedoms that he's looking for. And these freedoms can be obtained, in his mind, by becoming the Pirate King. Monkey D. Luffy is a little bit different. In this world, there are things called Devil Fruits. It's fruits that possess powers. Those that eat them lose the ability to swim. So if you fall into a world that is mostly ocean, you die. But in sacrificing that, you gain access to powers. So within this world, we have fishmen and mermaids, and you will see a pirate crew made completely of fishmen with their leader, Arlong. Arlong is one of the strongest combatants, pirates, whatever you may think, 
in all of East Blue. So this story out of the first four seas will start in East Blue, and then from East Blue will transition. That's kind of how the world works. You start out in one of the four, East, West, South, or North, and then from there you make it to the center point. From the center point you then enter the Grand Line, and the Grand Line is kind of the, the moment to prove that you have what it takes to be a pirate and find the One Piece. Now, because of where we're going to be at, we're not going to get too deep into the whole grand scheme of the world, but One Piece is about chasing dreams. While I enjoy the zany, goofy fights of it all, I also really take a lot from the uplifting moments. There's a lot of emotion and heart in One Piece. It's hard to tell that the story is going to go that way, especially when you're looking at clowns that are shooting their nose, and you have a boy that's stretching around making goofy things, and people are announcing their attacks. It's hard to really process all that cartooniness and realize that there really is a very profound, um, profound maybe is not the right word, but a deep meaning that comes with some of these struggles and some of these things. And there is some grit to the One Piece world. Now, I encourage people that if you can make it to the Arlong Park arc, <laughs> the Arlong Park arc, then you have made it to a point where things start to feel a little bit more serious. A little bit more seriousness gets interjected into this goofball fun time. From this point on, I then tell people that I'm trying to get involved in One Piece now that you've made it to Arlong, wait until you get to Alabaster. Once this story makes it to Alabasta Kingdom, then there is no turning back. You're hooked. Now, the challenge with this live action is going to be making it to that point. But I think making it to Arlong Park is a really good starting point for those of you that may be testing the waters <laughs> of One Piece. Now, we've got all that out of the way. Let's discuss why I think this is going to work. Reason number one, meticulous set design and production. This crew, our crew. One Piece world is vast, imaginative, and filled with unique locations. The Netflix adaptation seems to have nailed the balance between capturing the essence of Oda's creation while adding a touch of realism. Because it just won't work if you just exclude the realism from this aspect. There's just certain things from the manga and anime that just can't be made into real life without becoming too hokey. The sets, ships, and environments that we've seen so far bear a striking resemblance to the source material, creating a world that fans can truly immerse themselves in. And that is not hyperbole. Like, the Baratier... The Going Mary are the two big set pieces that we've really seen a lot of. And both of those look fantastic. Especially the, the Baratier ship is one of the coolest looking, and because it's practical, one of the coolest looking set pieces I've seen in a good long time and really sets the tone, especially in those teasers and the set photos that we were getting bidding, of how seriously they were taking this. Reason number two, Oda's involvement and blessing. Imagine having the original creator himself involved in the adaptation process. Oda hasn't just given his blessing. He's been actively contributing to key scenes and casting choices. Having Oda's guidance ensures that the heart of One Piece remains intact and the adaptation stays true to his vision. We've had other instances. I, for one, am a big Stephen King fan, so I've seen Stephen King talk about some of these adaptations that are coming out of his work, but you really wonder how much of involvement he had. And it feels like the less that there is involvement with him, the less that there is love and appreciation shown for his work, the more, let's say, chaotic the finished product can be for some of those adaptations. Now, it's also a double-edged sword. Maybe there are instances where Stephen King has over been over-involved in this. And I think that there is a concern that maybe Oda would have been too much. Maybe Oda was concerned himself about becoming too overbearing with this. That this is still his creation being brought to life, but at the end of the day, this is the work of the director and the team producing this. This is taking his vision and making it something else. Now, we have to find a balance there, but I think having Oda's involvement has been a huge thing, especially when you know one of the harshest critics is going to be the actual Japanese fandom. Listen, as someone that loves One Piece from my point of view over here in America, there is a probably a different feel, a different level of disappointment that could be met 
should this flounder and not work for the audience it was originally built for it. So I think having Oda there allows not only that to happen, but it really allows the casting choices. And the casting choices have where are where some of these live actions just get kind of wonky. Reason three, striking the right tone. Making enemies everywhere we go. <laughs> chop, chop, get her! One of the challenges with live action adaptations is finding the right balance between staying faithful to the source material and adapting it for a new medium. Netflix One Piece seems to be walking that tightrope well. It isn't overly gritty or realistic, preserving the vibrant and adventurous spirit of the anime while making necessary adjustments for live action storytelling. Sure, some designs might look a tad rough, we have Arlong, and I think there are a lot of thoughts that can be had about Arlong, but it's all about finding equilibrium. Where there is Arlong and concerns about that look and if it nailed it right or if it was ever going to be made right for live action, you have Buggy. And I can't stress this enough. I hope that my headcanon, which is that the Buggy character is going to be amazing in live action because the teaser has looked good. We haven't really seen the full range of what that actor is going to do with Buggy, but I have my hopes set so high just based on how the character looks. Buggy is an interesting character anyways, but the fact that I'm torn between a, a mixture of finding this funny, finding this bizarre, finding this stupid, and finding this slightly horrifying really gives me a good feeling about where they're going with Buggy. Because Buggy, when we meet him, is a clown, sure, that's funny, but at the same time, he is the most villainous character, the, the biggest bountied pirate we've seen at that point in time in the story. So he poses a legitimate threat to us as the audience watching Luffy go through with this. But again, just some of this stuff is, is going to be tough. I think the biggest and best thing that they've done is they've decided to embrace essentially the heart of One Piece. And with that, they're not trying to go super realistic. They're not trying to go gritty. As someone that has seen a lot of Marvel and DC stuff struggle to find this balance, I think it's awesome that for a live action adaptation that they're trying to blend this as much as they can and it seems that they're still siding more with the source material tone than just going outwardly, hey we're serious pirates, let's do this. No, our main character stretches and is a goofball. Let's have fun. Let's provide the depth and emotion that are there in the source material and you know, let's accommodate when we need to to keep things practical to make live action work. But at the end of the day, we're a goofy series. Let's be a little goofy. Let's have fun with this. This is fun. Reason number four, passionate cast and crew. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> this shows how tough it yeah, was for us to film and how, how challenging it was, right? It was a mission yeah. and a half. It was, it was something, guys. It was something. very proud. <laughs> Thank you for being my friends. And Thank you for being all. It's so cool that we get to do this. Too. Passion can make all the difference, and it's evident that both the cast and the production team have deep appreciation for the source material. They're not just professionals doing their job, they're genuine fans of One Piece. This shared enthusiasm can translate into performances that capture the essence of the characters we've grown to love. And I can't stress this enough. This is why by and large, I think this will work. But I don't know, I was one of those skeptics at first. Seeing even the teaser trailer, there was still a part of me that was like, I don't know how this is going to be the, when the finished product comes out. But recently what I've started to do is I started to look at, because we're at a point because of the writer strike that we're not getting any new promotional stuff from the cast and crew, but I started looking at some of the previously recorded stuff that dropped last month as part of Netflix Big To Dumb. Within that, you see these clips of these young people, the, the five straw hat pirates, bonding, genuinely having fun with each other, and at times, bizarrely, kind of mimicking the portrayal of the characters that they are putting on film here for us, which I think is such a positive sign. Not that they have to become the Straw Hat Pirates to make this work, but the fact that they are enjoying themselves, that they are enjoying the material, and that they have this communal relationship. Because I think that pays off not only with the cast, I think that not only pays off with the finished product, but once they're able to start having interactions with fans again, if this series resonates, that is going to be a huge hit. Because having the live action 
characters come to life and be fans with the fans themselves, I mean, it's what is some of the best parts of the Marvel Cinematic Universe in the beginning stages, right? Seeing how much fun those guys were having with things and then bringing that to their fans and sharing that moment with them. It's why it was so easy to root for Marvel in the beginning. And I hope that One Piece can mimic that. So there you have it. Our four reasons for why the Netflix live action One Piece adaptation is going to work. From meticulous set design to Oda's involvement, to striking the right tone and passionate cast and crew, the stars seem to be aligning for this exciting journey into the Grand Line. But hey, let's remember that every adaptation is a new adventure, and we're setting sail with caution and optimism. I've been Mr. Cack. This has been why this will work. I hope you've enjoyed it. Please feel free to like the video, share it with your friends to see if they agree with me, and leave a comment down below letting me know what you're most anticipating for the One Piece series. I'm also caught up to date on the manga and anime, so if you want to chat about any of those spoilers, let's have at it. Uh, again, I encourage you that if you haven't really given in to One Piece right now, give it all the way up to Arlong Park to kind of wet your whistle. If that doesn't push you over the edge, give it just a hold out for just a little bit longer. You'll enter a place called Whiskey Peak, and Whiskey Peak is where I fell in love with One Piece. From Whiskey Peak, you transition into Alabasta, and from Alabaster, there really is no going back. If you're not already enjoying the process by that point, then you're just not. But if you are, you're now a sucker and you're going to go through the next a million chapters and enjoy it. All right, we'll see you next time.